I'm going to show you what came with it. And this came in two different packages. So this package came by itself. This is just the fume extractor. And let me see if I can show it. And there it is in there. And it does come with this piece, this back plate that goes on the back of the actual machine. Then you have a hose, one of these hoses that came in a big box. Goes from here to the fume extractor. And then from the fume extractor you got another hose that you can vent out or just leave it laying there. I do not recommend you do that. And part of what I'm going to talk about today, and I may have a full video once it's 100% complete, but is the fact, let me just go over what came with it here. So you have the accessories, laser location bracket, have that. You have the wire, you have these testing plates to align it. I'll give you about 15 is what they told me. You have the glasses, you have this um, metal stick that's to help, help you get the uh, laser lined. They give you some hex wrenches, a plug. Let's see what fell this way. Oh, the USB drive. Okay. So I'm assuming that the laser head is already in there. We will come to find out once we get this thing working. I'm not even going to bother with this right now. I just wanted to show you what came with it. There's this tape, silver, metallic uh, duct tape. This is, I guess, used to make sure this thing stays on. I guess. I'm not sure. We'll find out. But I'm very detail-oriented when it comes to extracting air out of these units. I have a little bit of background on HVAC and uh, ventilation. So one of the things I didn't like is those little tiny holes, believe it or not. If those holes are not covered, or even there, if th those holes are not covered then it's on all four corners, you're going to have the smells come in instead of going out through here. Some of it might seep out you know through these corners and I'm gonna make sure we we just put some silicone adhesive that's it just a little dab and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put weather stripping here just to make sure that when this touches the metal here then it's not metal on metal that there's actually some cushioning in between just like you would add weather strip to your door or windows whatever you wanna make sure you do it here we'll go over that later but I'm going to show you now what I'm planning to do just so you can see if this might be something for you as well. So what you see there is a hole on the ceiling and we are going to basically take, make our own exhaust system and make sure this thing is exhausting completely to the outside. So we're going to prepare for that. I'm going to show you what I'm planning to do just so you get an idea. It might be something you're looking into doing, but obviously I don't want the smells to be in the room, so we want to exhaust that out. Okay, so the way that we're going to kind of boost the air out is once it goes through the fume extractor, it's going to go through four inch ductwork, metal ductwork, like what you use on a dryer vent. And then I got this inline fan with the control on it, where you can control the fan speed. I recommend you run it on high. And then I also, this fan will be right at the hole that we opened on the ceiling and we're gonna have a duct that's gonna kinda exhaust it out to the eaves. But if you notice, there's this uh, flapper in here that is laying down. So when this fan is off, the flappers come down. But when the fan comes on, they're going to open like that, you see? and the air is going to force them to to open up and it'll get the air out but this is good for various reasons why you want to get one of these and one of the reasons is for your conditioned space if you're heating it you don't want cold air to come in when you're not using the machine and, or if you're cooling the room you don't want cold air to escape but also it'll keep bugs out like from coming in and getting inside your machine or whatnot I don't know but it's good to have one of these you really, really want to have one of these. Don't just get an inline fan. 
and we're going to see we might do some homemade modification when it comes to modifying this opening into there because we're, we're going to try using the fume extractor at the beginning, see how it works out, and then just have the air go from the fume extractor into the ducting that's eventually going to take the air outside of the building. So we're going to do that and kind of show you a video what it looks like once it's all said and done. We might just shoot a, a little bit of in-between stuff here and there, but let's go ahead and get started. What I did is I weather stripped that back plate so now when it goes up against the actual machine, it's going to be airtight. There's not going to be any air sneaking between metal and metal. And like I mentioned about the four corners, what we've done is just put a little bit of silicone adhesive on there. And don't worry about this corner here. It's, the air is not going to escape. Okay, it's, it's going to be completely sealed on there. But you can see that the silicone is covering the whole entire corner and I did that everywhere everywhere so that's that's the first order of business and what I'll do is I'll post links on the description where you can this is exactly 3 eighths of an inch which is the exact size of this square plate 3 eighths of an inch thick silicone of course oh and by the way I forgot to mention the laser head is actually in this little packaging it's not inside the machine but that's for another day I do intend to have this perfectly ducted to the outdoors and then I'll worry about getting this in there and calibrating it and all that so let's continue okay so now that we have that done the next thing I'm planning to do is how am I going to transition from the hose that's going to leave my fume extractor which is this guy here into this fan and you just don't have out there a uh, an adapter that will go from this little opening into that four inch opening so the best idea I could come up with was a funnel that you can buy it's four inches up here so just make sure it's a four inch funnel and then what I'm gonna do here somewhere is cut somewhere around here so that it, it'll transition from from the actual, I guess it's a vacuum hose you can call it, into this. So, remember the air's traveling this way. So the way it's going to look like is it's going to do this right here. It's going to look like this. See that? So, so what it's going to do is, you see how it's four inches and it just fits right in there? I'm going to later seal that with silicone, just make sure it's airtight, just like I'm going to do the same thing here, just so we don't have any little gaps of air leaving anywhere. But then I'm going to cut this up here so that the hose, let me just set this to the side, so that the hose will go in this way and it'll transition that way. So I'm going to work on that now. So if you're asking how to do it, just have someone hold the hose there for you and mark it. Mark it with a, with a blade perhaps so you can have a little marking around it or any kind of marker that will stand out on the black. It could be even a, like a white out marker. I don't know if they still have those but whatever. Just a blade or something that can mark it and then you're just going to cut it and then you're going to somehow make sure you, you use strong adhesive and maybe even some of that metal tape. I do have black metal tape that I plan to use as well and then you can just get that in there and then get that into here that way. Pretty interesting. So let's get it to work. What I did is I cut the funnel just to about the size of the opening of the hose and I fit the hose through the funnel and just to seal the area between the actual opening where it's going through as you can see I have it on this hole that all the ladders have like to drop your tools in there and I'm just gonna let it sit there for one night let it completely thoroughly dry what I did is I put one of these zip ties on there to hold it hold the holes from moving around because I wanted it to be as much straight as I could or as much centered inside the actual funnel so once I 
let this dry this is going to go into the opening of the fan and what you want to make sure is if you're using this foam like I did just to give it a little bit of stability so it doesn't move around in there and just so once it dries it's nice and hard and, and steady in there is you want to use the foam that's made for windows and doors if you're using another type of foam you're going to it's going to expand a lot so just use the window and door which is minimal expansion and that will hold it in there it will not continue to expand just get it enough in there so you can wherever you see daylight at the bottom make sure it's all sealed and then just let it dry I'm just gonna leave it like that overnight and then by tomorrow we'll continue with the project okay so I let the uh, the foam dry up and what I did is I went ahead and put some silicone on there just the uh, part where the hose connects to the funnel despite the fact that I already had the the foam so if you look on there you can see the foams already dried up and this is what I used just regular clear silicone in a tube put it on there so what I'm gonna do next is remember this is the top part this is a part that the air is coming out of the building and if you look closely I, I also added silicone at the connections just so you don't have any air leaking out okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over just like that and this funnel is gonna go in there like that and I'm gonna seal it so I'm going to put silicone at the rim here and then also around here put it in, drop it in there let it sit there for a good six seven eight hours then come back finish the deal hopefully we should get this finished by tomorrow I'll update on the progress okay so I have let the silicone sit overnight and as you can see mm -hmm. it's nicely sealed everywhere I went ahead and just dabbed the silicone all over the uh, actual funnel just because it's a plastic product to prevent it from cracking just dab it in there and you can see all along the uh, circumference of the actual fan assembly and and the actual funnel I added silicone in between just to keep it in there it's a very good adhesive think about it aquariums fish tanks what keeps the pieces of glass together holding all that all that amount of water is silicone so I do recommend you use it okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these okay and if you notice they have four screws on it this is gonna go right up against the ceiling and the bottom part here is the one that's going to be exposed where, where we can see it on the uh, condition area and this is going to be kind of having a duct come off of it so let me see I have another one here so it'll look like this so this connector is going to go right here and then this is going to get the air towards the soffit of the building and if you can look on the inside what I'm gonna do is run some sheet metal screws through here maybe one here one here just to keep it in place and of course my favorite add some silicone just to keep it airtight maybe do that on the inside better and then it's gonna come up like this you guys see that so it's gonna go like this and then I'm also gonna run a sheet metal screw here one on the other side and then you can paint this black so it looks nice and uniform throughout or you can use black tape whatever floats your boat I'm just gonna see if paint works and that should be it so once this is screwed onto the ceiling this is basically gonna push the air out but we're gonna go ahead and complete that and see what it looks like so I wanted to give you a look inside give you an idea of what the sheet metal screws look like you can see the tips there 
and you can see how it's being screwed on there so it doesn't fall out while it's in the attic but that's basically it and what I'll do is I'll put uh, links in the description of the different materials I used to get it done but now I'm going to basically do the same thing over on this side because this is the side that's going to go into the fan exhaust or the exhaust fan so we'll go ahead and do that and get it up in the attic alright so there's a final product I've got the hose that's going to eventually go into the fume extractor so this end here is going to go into the fume extractor the outlet side and what I did here if you guys remember earlier in the video I used that weather stripping and then I did put also silicone in there if you remember that so all this is sealed the air is supposed to come out of here without seeping around this or even in these corners so it should be a nice pure exhaust the way we have it set up so we're almost done talking about the fume extractor there's your filter the purpose of the filter is so you don't have dust or any of the particles that come off of the phone while it's being lasered into the hose and into your exhaust fan although behind this pleated filter there's a little small carbon filter it's not much but anyway it's there and that helps with the smells but here's your access to it and then of course this goes here and just like I did here I do strongly recommend that you use these clamps instead of the metal tape that they provided this is a much secure way of keeping it there from moving but remember the reason why we're doing all this modification is to get the smells out this is not meant you know to get the dust out the dust is going to stop here but the smells is the issue and that's why we're doing the exhaust fan so remember this is your air intake it's going to connect to the back of the machine okay and then here is the hose that's going outside very simple okay finally we have everything connected and we have our fume extractor on top of the machine I don't know I might relocate it somewhere else but all the hoses are connected with clamps and one thing I found that would be useful is to have one of these type of connectors or switches or outlet strips where you have both your fume extractor and your exhaust fan connected so when you need to use it just flip it on and you're good to go simple as that